In 2021, Texas froze. In 2023, it nearly burned. And now, in 2025, the state is rewriting its energy future from the ground up. Wind, solar, hydrogen, batteries, and a high-voltage lifeline stretching 400 miles east. It's the boldest grid gamble in the U.S., and it's already costing over $35 billion. Texas has always done things its own way, including electricity. It runs on its own isolated grid, managed by ERCOT, with almost no federal backup. That independence collapsed in 2021, leaving millions in the dark. Now, Texas is racing to transform its power infrastructure before the next crisis hits. More than $35 billion is being poured into megaprojects, not just to fix the grid, but to export energy across state lines. The stakes? Keep the lights on in Texas, or risk becoming America's next blackout story. At the heart of Texas's grid transformation is a single high-voltage lifeline, the Southern Spirit Transmission Line, a $10 billion megaproject backed by Pattern Energy. Stretching from West Texas to Mississippi, this 400-mile line will move 4,000 megawatts of wind and solar power from the desert plains to the deep south. It's the first time in decades Texas is voluntarily connecting to neighboring grids. What makes it bold? Because Texas isn't federally required to do this. It's choosing to link up for profit and for resilience. But threading a line across three states, hundreds of landowners, and multiple grid operators, that's taken nearly a decade. Now, after endless environmental reviews and legal challenges, construction is finally underway. And when it's complete, it won't just support Texas. It could power 2 million homes in places like Alabama, Georgia, and beyond, giving Texas a new role as the energy exporter of the South. But will it be enough to stabilize ERCOT? Texas is building the highways for power. But what about the fuel itself? That story starts in a field northeast of Dallas. While wind dominates West Texas, solar is rapidly taking over the east, and no site is bigger than the Samson Solar Energy Center, a $1.6 billion mega farm sprawling across five counties near Paris, Texas. Once fully operational, it will generate over 1,300 megawatts of power, enough to run more than 300,000 homes. But Samson is just the beginning. Texas now installs more solar capacity than California, with dozens of gigawatt-scale projects either under construction or nearing completion. Why? Because in Texas, you don't need state approval to build a solar farm, just land, capital, and a connection to the ERCOT grid. But that's also the problem. Without tight oversight, projects can outpace transmission, leading to bottlenecks, curtailed output, and wasted power during peak sunlight. So even with record investment, Texas is struggling to move the power it's making. Texas's energy boom isn't just about electrons. It's also about water. Many utility-scale solar farms, hydrogen facilities, and power plants require massive volumes of water for cooling and processing. But parts of Texas are already facing chronic drought, especially in West Texas, where wind and solar dominate. In some regions, new energy projects are competing with agriculture and groundwater supplies are running low. If water access becomes the next choke point, Texas may have to choose between energy expansion and long-term sustainability. As Texas modernizes its grid, it's also navigating a delicate political balance with Washington. Many of its megaprojects, including hydrogen hubs and battery storage, are supported by federal grants from the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and Inflation Reduction Act. But Texas leadership remains skeptical of federal oversight. Some lawmakers have openly resisted full-grid interconnection or emissions tracking mandates tied to federal funds. The result? Billions in investment, with strings attached. And a state trying to walk the line between independence and federal money it can't afford to ignore. And when the sun sets, or the wind dies down, there's only one thing that can keep the grid alive. To balance those surges in wind and solar, Texas is turning to batteries. In 2020, the state had virtually no large-scale storage. Today, it's pushing 5,000 megawatts, with another 10,000 already in planning. 
Leading the charge is Tesla, whose megapack facilities are dotting the outskirts of cities like Houston and Austin. These grid-scale lithium-ion systems can inject stored energy back into the grid during evening demand spikes, exactly when solar drops off. And unlike coal or natural gas, they can do it in seconds. But there's a catch. Batteries don't generate power, they just shift it, and they only last a few hours. So while they're vital for stability, they're not a full solution. Texas still needs more generation and a smarter way to move it. But for all its bets on wind and solar, Texas still leans on an old standby. Even as Texas races toward renewables, natural gas remains the backbone of its grid, creating a complex energy paradox. ERCOT still relies on gas for over 40% of its electricity, with 15 new gas plants approved since 2021. These dispatchable units are critical when renewables lag, like during 2023's summer demand surge, when gas fired at 60% capacity for weeks. But here's the tension. The same federal funding fueling Texas's clean energy boom requires emissions reductions. New gas plants risk stranded assets if carbon capture fails to scale. Now, companies like Vistra are retrofitting old gas plants with carbon capture, while activists push back, calling it greenwashing. Texas's energy future may hinge on this high-wire act, keeping the lights on with gas today, without locking in pollution tomorrow, one that could make or break its energy transition. Even as generation grows, much of that new power can't get where it's needed. Across Texas, transmission congestion is forcing ERCOT to curtail output, wasting clean energy during peak production. Wind farms in West Texas often generate more power than lines can carry east, and solar fields in the south are hitting capacity limits before they even come online. Solving that will take more than just lines. It'll take routing reforms, pricing updates, and fast-tracking high-voltage expansion before the grid chokes on its own progress. At the same time, Texas is facing a surge in energy-hungry industrial development. New chip fabs, EV plants, data centers, and hydrogen facilities are pushing grid demand higher than ever. According to ERCOT, load growth in some counties is doubling every two to three years, driven by crypto, AI servers, and electrified manufacturing. If supply, storage, and transmission don't scale in sync, Texas could run out of power, even as it builds more than any other state. And that's where a different kind of fuel is starting to rise. One you can't see, but may soon power everything from trucks to turbines. Enter hydrogen, the wild card of Texas's energy strategy. In late 2023, the Department of Energy selected High Velocity Hub as one of seven federally backed hydrogen hubs across the US. Centered in Houston, this $7 billion initiative aims to create a full hydrogen economy. Production, pipelines, power generation, heavy transport, Texas is betting that clean hydrogen, made from natural gas with carbon capture, or from renewables via electrolysis, could be the next LNG. It would allow Texas to export clean molecules, not just electrons. But hydrogen is expensive, and infrastructure is sparse. Pipelines must be retrofitted, fueling stations don't exist at scale, and safety concerns still linger. Still, the state's mix of gas expertise, Wind power and industrial demand makes it one of the few places where hydrogen might actually work. But no amount of clean energy will matter if the grid that controls it can't evolve. Even with all this new energy, one piece still threatens the whole plan, the grid operator itself. ERCOT remains an isolated system, almost completely cut off from the national grid. That independence gave Texas flexibility but it also left the state vulnerable, as 2021 proved. Now, as energy exports ramp up and clean tech floods the market, ERCOT is being forced to evolve. It's testing real-time pricing, AI load forecasts, and limited interconnections with neighboring states. But there's resistance, both political and economic. Interstate ties could invite federal regulation, which many in Texas want to avoid. So the question is no longer can Texas power itself. It's whether it can adapt fast enough to manage what it's built. Yet, not every Texan is on board with this breakneck transformation. 
In the countryside, a very different energy battle is playing out. Not everyone is celebrating Texas's energy gold rush. In rural counties, backlash against renewables is hardening. From the panhandle to the hill country, local governments have passed 21 ordinances restricting wind solar development since 2021, citing land use conflicts, property values, and fears of industrialization. Similar fights are erupting over battery storage sites near residential areas. This nimbyism has consequences. ERCOT reports at least three gigawatts of clean energy projects delayed or canceled due to local opposition, enough to power 600,000 homes. As Texas chases energy dominance, it must answer a tough question. Can it reconcile urban demand for clean power with rural communities bearing the infrastructure burden? From wind farms and solar fields to battery banks and hydrogen hubs, Texas is rewriting its energy future at breakneck speed. But speed comes with risk. Billions are being bet on new tech, fragile infrastructure, and political will that could shift with the next blackout. Will Texas become the energy capital of the clean era, exporting power across America? Or will its bold experiment collapse under its own weight? The gamble is on. And the next few summers may tell us everything. What do you think? Is Texas leading the charge into a new energy era? Or is it setting itself up for the next grid disaster? Drop your thoughts below. And if you want to see what America's most advanced infrastructure looks like, and if you're into mega projects, engineering feats, and the future of infrastructure, hit subscribe. We're just getting started.